Hello everyone, Connor Woods here, analyst at Forex Signals and HowToTrade.com. Even if you haven't been involved in the financial markets from a trading perspective over the last year, you would have done exceptionally well not to hear the word inflation. It's been dominating our screens really since the COVID-19 pandemic and for good reason. In this video, Shane Vanier and I will explain how inflation is measured and why traders are so tuned in to the monthly reports. This is something you can save for future use throughout your trading career as a reminder to you. So let's get started. The primary tool for measuring inflation in an economy is what is known as CPI. So what is CPI? CPI stands for Consumer Price Index and it measures the change in the general price of goods and services over a given period of time. All the economies and central banks you see out there report their consumer price index reports monthly. And the numbers that are reported are crucial to policymakers because price stability, in most cases, is a key target. It will give them clues also on how economic growth is faring. For example, an inflationary situation tends to occur when money is being significantly distributed around the economy and therefore showing growth. But lower inflation rates are a representation of money being stripped from the economy and thus a weakening outlook. Okay, so how is CPI calculated? Now, when we talk about how these CPI figures are actually calculated, it can get complicated. But let me break it down simply for you. The calculation involves taking a measurement of the average change over time in the prices paid by consumers for a market basket of goods and services. And you may think, well, what is a basket um, of goods and services? Well, essentially, we are talking about a theoretical group of products that average consumers in a country will typically buy, including things such as bread and milk or housing costs like rent, transportation, education services, medical care, and so on. If the price of that basket is higher from one month to the next or from one year to the next, that means prices are inflated. And this is the key data for central banks, who in many cases target 2% inflation. At the time of recording this video, inflation in the US is over 7%, over three times the target. Therefore, it's been the dominating story over the last year and will always be topical. Monthly CPI releases typically cause significant volatility in the markets and they should not be ignored. Let's tune in to our expert analysis in the States Shane Vanier to explore the sorts of reactions we can expect to witness as traders. Thank you, Connor. Now that we know what CPI is, we can talk a little bit about how to analyze CPI in the live market. To do so, we use a device called relative analysis. Now what relative analysis is, is we evaluate a factor with respect to its previous release and expectations. In the case of CPI, we evaluate CPI with respect to its previous release and market expectations. As an example, you can see back in December, on the 13th of December, we had the release of November CPI value. The actual number came in at 7.1%. Now that was well below the previous release, which was 7.7%, and consensus expectations of 7.3%. So in this case, we can definitively say that inflation did come down, CPI did pull back, and that was going to have an impact on the markets, as well as the US dollar commodities really across the board. So when we analyze CPI with our relative analysis, there's a couple different ways that the number can go and a few different impacts that it can have on the markets. Now, a highest CPI reading, which would be one that comes in well above expectations and well above the previous release, is going to lead to a bullish USD. Now, why would that be the case? When we have runaway inflation, central banks get involved, they raise interest rates, they try to reduce that money supply. And in doing so, they put pressure on things like risk assets and commodities. So a, strong, a high CPI is a bullish US dollar. That leads to bearish risk asset pricing and bearish commodity pricing. Now, on the other hand, a low CPI, as we just went over, when you have something that comes in beneath expectations and beneath the previous release, it actually leads to a bearish USD. Why is that? Because the central bankers are less likely to step in and intervene to control that runaway inflation. So what do you have? You have a weakened U.S. dollar, which leads to bullish risk asset pricing and bullish commodity pricing. Okay, now that we know what CPI is and how to analyze it in the live market, let's talk about what we can expect when the number actually is released to the public. In my estimation, there's four distinct phases to a CPI release, and here they are. Number one is your pre-market calm. 
that's when everybody is really waiting for the number to come out. A lot of uncertainty. No one wants to commit one side or the other to the market. Very calm, tight market conditions. Number two, instant volatility. When the number actually is released to the public, a rush of orders hits the market. Everybody from institutional traders to momentum algorithms get involved in pricing the CPI release. Number three, it creates a directional move in price. Now, maybe for a very short period of time, we may only be talking about 15, 20, 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, 30 minutes. It may be for a short period of time, but typically there's a definitive bullish or bearish initial reaction to the CPI release. And lastly, a Wall Street correction. In some cases, you see the Wall Street on that cash open about an hour after a CPI release, you'll see a correction of the price action. You'll see price come off of a bullish move or up from a bearish move. Now, it's not an according to Hoyle rule, and it also depends on the asset class you're trading, but a lot of times that cash open, that Wall Street open an hour later can produce very different price action than what we saw during CPI. So let's take a look at the pricing charts. This is an example of the US 30 back on the December 13th um, release of CPI. You can see our four phase are clearly defined. Number one is our calm, very quiet markets, very tight, tight trading conditions um, leading into the release. And then boom, market drop, or excuse me, the number drops, the market takes off, absolutely takes off. A rush of orders hit. There's no one on the sell side. And what does that create? Our number three phase, a directional move in price. In this case, you had an initial directional move to the bull, upwards trajectory of price action. And then what happens from our top? Number four, our Wall Street correction. As the, as the CPI number becomes priced in the live market, we see a contrary price action to that initial CPI move. Four phases, calm before the storm, instant volatility, that rush of orders creates a directional move in price. And in this case for the US 30, back on December 13th, 2022, Wall Street stepped in and corrected the initial reading of the CPI. So fascinating look at price action and the four phases. It really does depend on which, uh, which asset class you're trading. This is the November release. Now, very similar number, very different, uh, very different price action here. You'll see phase one, calm before the storm. Phase two, number comes out, rush, an absolute rush of orders hits the market. There's your bearish directional move. Number three, um, well, in number three and then number four, you don't get the retracement. You don't get the Wall Street rebound. Now, a lot of that has to do with this being a dollar and not a risk asset like a US 30. But still, just because sometimes we get that big correction doesn't mean that we're going to get it every single time. So now let's look at a few keys on how to trade CPI successfully. No matter if CPI is at all time highs or if it's on a downward trajectory, there's a few things that we need to do to trade it effectively. Number one, we have to identify our technical levels ahead of time. Understand that when that CPI number drops, price action is going to be violent. It's going to be unpredictable. It's going to be all over the charts. Have your technical levels ready to go ahead of time. Number two, apply leverage conservatively. Remember, those volatility can be big. There really is no limit. There's no rules on how far markets can move on a CPI release. If you have a big size on in a large position, you can get stopped out of a winning trade just because you don't have the margin money to cover the swing. Be careful with your leverage. I recommend being conservative going into releases like this. Number three, take your profits and don't be greedy. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten messages from people that say, man, I got that initial move. I got that initial CPI move and then gave it back on that Wall Street correction. Don't be greedy. If you hit your profit targets, take your profits. If you're on the right side of a giant move, take a little bit of that money home with you before the Wall Street open. There's nothing wrong with put ring in the cash register and put a little bit of cash in your pocket. And lastly, have a plan and trade it. Bottom line is, is, is you have to have discipline in this game. Know what you're going to do and then do it and you'll be just fine. And if you need a little more guidance, feel free to pop in on CPI Live on YouTube here. Uh, myself, Connor Woods, and Nick Quinn will be bringing you the action live. We'll show you some key levels. We'll also break down some key fundamentals and how to read the number in real time. And it can be a fantastic way to address the CPI number, um, you know, from a position of strength. All right, that's all from here. Back to you, Connor. So there we have it. Hopefully this has given you a clear insight into the world of inflation and as a trader you now understand the importance of the monthly releases. Shane, Nick and myself Connor Woods cover the inflation reports from countries all over the world every single month so make sure you tune into those live streams. As always if you've enjoyed this video feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until then trade well and we will see you on our next live stream.